When you think about Black History Month, the legend of Jack Daniels whiskey is probably not a story that comes to mind. As the legend goes, a preacher and distiller took Jack under his wing, taught him how to run a still. Then Jack struck out on his own and created the best-selling American whiskey in the world. But there's one important person missing from that version, an open secret almost hidden from history. His name is Nearest Green, a former slave whose story is finally getting the attention it deserves. A distinguished taste, an unmistakable bottle. It's the most popular whiskey label on the shelf, but perhaps mislabeled. So she said, you know, my grandfather made that whiskey for Jack Daniel. Few know the history behind this popular spirit, but it's a story Debbie Staples has heard her whole life, passed down from generation to generation. Debbie's great-great-grandfather, Nearest Green, a former slave whose real name was actually Nathan, created the taste that became this legendary brand. Nearest was the person who day by day was there alongside of Jack Daniel, uh, showing the whiskey making process. The story of Green was well known in Lynchburg, Tennessee. It just never left Lynchburg. He wasn't used to promote the company's history, even though he was mentioned in Jack Daniels' official biography at least 50 times. And his name was rarely uttered in distillery tours. Still, Jack Daniels historian Nelson Eddy says Green was never a secret. The company has always acknowledged it. Uh, I think the real question is, is how much weight has been put behind the story? The answer, not much, until now. And Brown Foreman, the company that owns Jack Daniels, is working to set the record straight. What we are doing is talking about something um, historically true to this brand. This is a descendant of Jack, and this is a descendant of Nearest. Author Fawn Weaver first learned the story while reading an article in the New York Times celebrating Jack Daniels' 150th birthday. The whole internet blows up with saying, you took advantage of a slave, you stole his recipe, you all these different things. Blowback from that article was swift, and the company pulled back on initial plans to promote Green's story. So when the story comes out, this country is going through some pretty intense racial conversations. And so the president of Jack Daniels, Mark McCallum, uh, decided to uh, not talk about it as much so that people didn't think we were trying to get commercial gain because of it. But the story had such an impact on Weaver, it became an obsession. And this is the original Jack Daniels legacy. By her count, she's unearthed more than 10,000 documents and clues to unravel the mystery of Jack Daniels' mentor. Everyone immediately assumed that Nearest was Jack's slave. Jack never had any slaves. She shared her treasure trove of history with the president of the company. He looked at the research room, he looked at a few things and he said, how do we make it right? Immediately. Now the man who actually taught Jack how to make whiskey, his name was Nathan Nearest Green. Within a week, they were rewriting their story and rolling that out in their tour, so they moved quickly. We have never distilled whiskey in 150 years without a green working with us. Nearest and his wife Harriet had 11 children. Some of them worked at the distillery, including his son George, pictured here sitting right next to Jack Daniel. Debbie has been with the company for 39 years. Along with her sister Jackie and brother Jerome, they're the only three descendants of green still working at the distillery. They've had meetings with the company, which plans to roll out a major display at the visitor center in the next few months. And I hope that one day it'll get to that point. You won't be able to say Jack Daniel without saying near his screen. Fawn Weaver and the Green family are working closely with Brown Foreman on efforts to incorporate Green's past with Jack Daniel's future. Many of the artifacts she's collected will be on permanent loan to the Smithsonian's Museum of African American History and Culture right here in Washington, D.C.